Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back working on the Jimmy DeResta bandsaw, and today goal is, is I want to get the motor completely mounted on here, get the belt pulley on the machine. Um, may try to get it belted up. I need to see if I got some belt long enough to do that, and maybe even do a little electrical work and see if we can get this thing running. That would be awesome if we can. So let's get in here and see how far we get before we run out of time, and uh, see what we can get accomplished on the DeResta bandsaw today. So first thing I want to do is get the pulley mounted over here. And I've got this collar that we put on previously to kind of hold everything in place. I'm going to take it off completely because the shaft is basically, or the pulley is going to basically serve the role of that. So originally there was this spacer which slides up on here. And then we have the big flat belt pulley. And I'm going to hopefully slide right on here. I realize I'm probably in front of the camera. It's tight quarters over here, guys. We're making the best out of this we can. Man, that is a snug fit. That's just what we want. Here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten these up on both sides. That should put a little dimple down the shaft. We're gonna pull it back out. I'm gonna um, put some flats on there where these are so these can clamp in place and not spin on the shaft. And then we'll put it back on and install it. So let me get a wrench and we'll tighten those up. All right, let me get these uh, set screws tightened down. I think they're just barely in the top, so I got a long ways to go with them. I'll bring you guys back after I get those tightened up and get those marked. <coughs> I got these tightened up on there, so now we're gonna loosen them back up and I'm gonna take the uh, wheel back off and I should have a couple of marks where those set screws kind of came in contact with that shaft and then we can make a little indention there to lock it in place where it won't slip. So let's go ahead and see if we can get our shaft off here. All right. I got just what I need here. The two marks I'm looking for. One right here. One right there. So I think what I'm going to do is get me a drill and just put me a little indention. I did that kind of over here where this set screw went, although we're not going to use that one anymore. It's not going to hurt anything. It's below the surface. But we'll put a couple in there as well. And then we can slide it back on. I also put a mark here on the end of my shaft. I don't know if you can see that. That's where I can kind of line those um, keys up because I won't be able to see these when I put them back on, but I can line those, um, those screws in. So let me grab a drill and we'll see if we can get uh, a couple little holes started, little dimples. Tell you what, let me get a center punch and center punch those. That should do the trick. Let's put our uh, pulley back on. And again, I can kind of line things up here with this mark I put on the end. And now those uh, screws will have a little detent to kind of lock in place. And that'll make sure this pulley doesn't spin. And if you notice it kind of 
moved as I went around it, found that hole, and it's uh, locking itself in. We'll do the same thing on the back. I've got my motor lined up over here with the pulley, and I want to mark where I want to transfer, or I want to drill these holes to mount the motor. So I've just got a transfer punch, and we're going to go around off to the four holes. Uh, this transfer punch, again, is the same size as the hole that I'm drilling through and it helps me locate these. I'm now I'm gonna pull this motor off once I get all these done and we'll drill those holes out and get ready to mount this motor in place. To drill these holes, I'm gonna use my uh, mag drill. This is, if you haven't ever seen these before, this has basically got a magnetic base on here. I turn that on, it turns on the electromagnet, sucks this thing down and we got a, a drill here that we can use just like a drill press. We can move it around and just, it just sticks wherever we need to go. This is an old one uh, I picked up along the way. Don't use it that often, but man, when you need it, it sure comes in handy. And I'm gonna drill these out. We're gonna drill a quarter inch hole then go back and drill half inch holes after we get them opened up. Let's see. Position that just a little bit better. That's a little bit better, I think. And we'll go ahead and drill that one out while we're at it. All right, one hole down, three more to go. Uh, this makes this a lot easier than having to use a hand drill. I'll go around and get those uh, drilled. We'll be ready to mount this back up. We've got our bolts in place here. Go ahead and get these tightened up. And I think we'll have our motor all mounted here. So... So now that we've got the motor mounted, the next thing we need to do is to hook up the electrical stuff so this thing will work. Now I need a motor starter for this. A motor starter's purpose is, is it is a switch that turns the motor on and off and also has uh, protection for the motor to protect to make sure that it doesn't get too many amps to it. Uh, most motors are gonna be have on the tag what how many amps they're rated for, the maximum amps that they'll draw at startup or whatever. And uh, oftentimes that does not match how many amps your circuit can provide that motor. For example, uh, this one here running at 220 volts, uh, 22 amps is what it's rated for on the low end. Now to have a properly sized breaker for this, we would need to feed it with a probably a 30 amp breaker. A 20 amp breaker would be too low because we need 22 amps. I don't think they make a 25 amp breaker, but you know, probably a 30 amp breakers, but that's too many amps. If this motor starts drawing, you know, gets in a bind or whatever, you could burn the motor up if you, if it was provided 30 amps. So in the motor starter, it's gonna detect whenever it reaches whatever, however many amps that motor is rated for, and it will actually turn the switch off. So that is to protect the motor. Now the motor starter we're gonna use is a modern style uh, motor starter. Uh, this is a little bit different than the older styles, which are a little bit bigger. Uh, for the overload protection on the older styles, they had heaters, which basically were just little strips of metal that were a certain thickness, a certain gauge, and they would get heat up whenever it, draw, it started drawing that many amps and it would mechanically kick it out. This has got a little bit different setup in here. You can actually just adjust this. And there's a dial on here for how many amps you want your protection to be. Uh, for different sizes, this is a NEMA size one motor starter for a little bit heavier, bigger motor. Uh, on the old ones, again, you'd have to change those heaters out. You'd have to actually order the right size heaters. This, you just dial it in. And we've got 22 amps on the low end there, so we're, we're good. Um, but I need to get this mounted on here. This, of course, the top part is the switch. Whenever you hit the button, that's what's gonna actually turn it on. The bottom part is the, the overload protection. 
and uh, we need, but we need to mount this on here. By the way, pick this up from American Rotary. Again, the guys that make the rotary phase converters. Uh, they have all kinds of motor related stuff. You can go to their website, order these. That's what exactly what I did. Um, and because they are a sponsor of my website, I'm always like to mention this. They give my viewers a 10% discount. So if you need a motor starter, you need a phase converter, you need a transformer, whatever like that that you need, you can get it from American Rotary, get a 10% discount. Just use checkout code VINTAGE10, VINTAGE10 at checkout, and that will get you a 10% discount at American Rotary. So anyway, we're gonna mount this over here. I think we're just gonna mount it right here. And the way I'm gonna do that is I've cut a couple little brackets here. I'm just gonna mount these to this piece here, and then we're gonna mount the motor starter to this, and that will have it out of the way. It'll kind of be up underneath this plate. It won't be real, uh, you know, I don't think it'll be unsightly or anything like that. We'll just mount it right here. It has a cover that goes on it, and uh, out of sight, out of mind. So that's kind of my game plan. Uh, I'm just gonna probably to put two bolts there. We'll drill a hole where these need to go. I'm not gonna show all this, guys. I'm just gonna go do it. Uh, you guys have seen me drill holes and, and tap holes before, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put some brackets on here and mount this motor starter in place. We'll be right back. Well, I think we have this thing wired up and I saved you guys the boredom of watching me uh, wire this stuff up. Electrical work is just slow and tedious. It takes time. Uh, but real briefly, let me just kind of tell you what I got. So first off, power comes in. I got a cord going out. This is a 30 amp circuit coming in. It feeds into the top of the motor starter up here. My three, three phase lines coming in. Um, comes through the motor starter again, goes through the uh, overload protection down here, which we talked about, gives us the protection if the motor draws too many amps. I've got this thing set on uh, 22 amps right now which is what my motor is. So if by chance we draw more than 22 amps, it will trip out right here, protect the motor, even though we're feeding it with 30 amps total. It's not gonna trip at the breaker, it'll trip right here. And we got this size exactly for our motor. Uh, the power comes out the bottom here. Uh, this goes to the motor. So we go over here, up and into the motor. Now the other line coming in here is to my remote switch, uh, which we have wired up. And if you are, Curious about how this thing works uh, as far as wiring and stuff. I'm not gonna go into that now. I've actually done a video specifically talking about uh, how to wire a motor starter with a remote switch uh, where you have the collapsible cir uh, circuit on it that uh, where you can engage and disengage. I'll put a link to that down in the description if you're interested in that, wanna go back. But anyway, this is all done. We're ready to button this thing up and uh, let's, uh, Give it a try. I've already tested that. I know it works, but I'll, we'll show you guys. Got a cover here. Goes on this. We'll go ahead and uh, get installed back on. All buttoned up. And over here on the front of the machine, I got the start stop button right there handy where as you're running this, you should be able to reach that if you need to turn it off for some reason. Again, start and stop. All right, let's uh, see if we can get a belt put on this thing and see if we can make some wheels turn. I've got my belt that we're gonna use here. This is just uh, some flat belt material. Um, in this case, I ordered it from McMaster Car. And what we'll do is we're just gonna, we gotta get this cut to the right length and splice together for this machine. So I'm just going to kind of loop everything around and uh, get a rough idea on where I need to cut this belt. Now, I see this is my square side over here. I've already cut one side of the belt square. So I'm just gonna kind of pull this up tight and it's not super tight as you can tell, but this will give me an idea of where I need to cut my belt. I'm just gonna take a marker and I'm gonna mark that. And we're gonna actually cut it about an inch shorter than that, which will give me some stretch. And I have some adjustment in the motor base that we can take that up. So anyway, I got a little bit extra to cut off. Let's cut that off and we'll splice this belt.
Now to cut this, I'm using this uh, belt cutter that I've got. This uh, makes sure that everything cuts nice and square. So and again, I wanna cut it a little bit on the short side so it'll be tight. So that's right where we had it, which was gonna be very loose. So I'm gonna pull about a, you know, roughly an extra inch of belt out in there. And this little thing works kind of like a guillotine. It just cuts straight across there. I got a nice square cut on that belt. Now let's splice it. I'm gonna use my belt lacer here to lace this. And uh, we're gonna use the clipper style belt lacing, metal lacing. First thing I need to do is uh, cut my, my lacing to length here. So I just got a pair of scissors. I'm just gonna cut off the length that we need for this particular cut. There we go. There's a little comb down in the bottom of this that will properly space all those pins where they need to be. Um, we'll kind of get that down in there. Take my pin and run through there. That's gonna make sure everything's at the right depth. And you can leave this in and take it out after you lace it. I like to just go ahead and pull it on out now. And those little clips are gonna close up around um, this. We'll just go ahead and put that in there and squeeze the vise together. And I need to tighten it up. Okay, I think we got it there. Pull that out and that side is laced. We need to do the same thing to the other side. Put our second set of lacing in. Again, put our pin in. Go ahead and take our paper out. And again, we will crimp it all together and we should have our belt ready to go together. So let's get our belt here ready to actually splice together. The two combs uh, meet up with one another and it comes with a little pin. You just cut these to the length. This little pin will hinge in there together and actually hold it all in. So now this should be ready to go on. There we go. Now we need to tighten everything up. There's a screw back here on the back of this um, base plate on this motor. And this is gonna pull everything out and make this belt tight. So this is where our adjustment is on this one. And I'm just gonna pull this thing out until I feel like it's good. That's probably good right there. We'll tighten all this down. I want to just run it first to test it and make sure everything's good. In fact, let's go ahead and uh, try it out, make sure everything's lined up like it needs to and it's going to work. All right, guys, I think we got it where we can at least test it out. I do have an issue, and as soon as I start this, you're going to see what the issue is. Uh, but hopefully we can show, show this thing at least working. So uh, let me start it up. Up, oh, yep, it stayed on. See what's happening with the belt down there? So uh, part of this, I think I, I, I need to do play with the alignment of the motor. I think the, the motor needs to come out just a little bit farther than what it is. We can, we can play with that uh, without too much trouble. Uh, but the other problem that I'm having is, is that we got a lot of mass and inertia up in the, in the main wheel on this thing. And when we start this thing up, this uh, motor is just basically spinning up to full speed really fast and you're getting some slippage on this uh, pulley here. 
And when that slippage is happening, it's causing that belt to want to run over to one side. Now, once it gets up to speed, it's kind of finding its center and it's getting where it needs to be. Now, I have kind of cocked this motor out a little bit in this direction to kind of try to compensate for that, but I've pretty much got all the adjustment in that as I, as I have. So what's the solution? Um, I think what we need is we need to have a soft start on this where when we speed it, get it speeded spinning up that it just kind of eases into going into full speed. So we can accomplish that by putting up a variable frequency drive on this. And that'll also give us some adjustment or some control of the speed of the, of the fan saw itself uh, where we can actually dial that in. So I'm thinking that a variable frequency drive for motor control, which is what a VFD is designed for, is going to be in order on this. So uh, anyway, I'm going to look into that. We may end up changing some things out, putting a VFD on this to try to solve some of these problems. But good news is it is working. Well, guys, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, we're going to have to go the extra step here, but I do think it's the right thing to do. And I've debated on putting a variable frequency drive on this thing to start with, um, just so that I'd have some speed control. The good news is, is that I did check the uh, speed of the main shaft that's running at full speed, and it's turning at 427 RPMs. Uh, according to the catalog, it's supposed to be running at 450 RPM. So we're really close and, you know, you're never going to hit that number exactly, but uh, close enough that it's running where it needs to be. Now, I'll be honest with you, with 48 inch wheels at, at 427 RPMs, you've got some really fast surface speed going on that blade. It's probably faster than what I would feel comfortable running uh, uh, one of these machines. So having that option of having some variable speed in there again, I think will be, uh, will be a nice, a nice uh, feature to have. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at doing that. Um, I think that'll give us a little bit more options there. So let me uh, see if I can source a VFD. We're gonna come back and revisit this. In the meantime, I do want to make some adjustments to the motor mount so that I can I think this needs to be out about a, I don't know, three quarters, half inch, or three quarters to an inch more in this direction. Uh, I got some adjustment down here in the plate that I can do that. That'll give me some time to work on that. I can do that off camera. Uh, but the other good news is, is that she's running as smooth as can be. Now I don't have the top wheel turning yet, but I mean, just on the bottom wheel, that thing is just, I mean, it is just super, super slick. So. Uh, that's a good positive sign. I haven't felt the bearings yet. I ran this thing for a good little bit. They're not even, you can't even detect that they're warm. So that's, that's a good sign as well. So, all right, we'll revisit this. Progress on the, the bandsaw. Uh, not there yet, but getting closer. Uh, hopefully next episode, we'll be able to uh, get a blade on this thing and, and uh, get her spinning and get her tried out for, for real. Uh, I do need to get the, the, the guides uh, mounted on here as well. So that might be something else we'll do between now and then. All right, that's going to be a wrap. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always great, greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, big, huge thank you to, to the uh, supporters of the site who support on Patreon and PayPal. You allow us to be able to take the time to make these videos and share them with you. Uh, and big huge thank you also to the subscribers who have just taken the time to click that button and subscribe. Uh, with that, we'll catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching.